The Public Service Broadcasting Trust is uh, a little more than a decade old, and what we do is support the production of independent documentary films, uh, largely by independent young starting out filmmakers. Uh, we have in over a decade uh, made more than uh, 600 odd films uh, by 450 different filmmakers. Um, we've had more than 800 international film festival selections, won 200 plus awards, 41 national awards. So we've had a fair amount of empirical success and it is really our constituency of filmmakers uh, who make our work meaningful and possible. And apart from the Ministry of External Affairs, we are supported by Prasar Bharti uh, Durdarshan and uh, have received some funds from uh, the Ministry of Information Broadcasting, Ford Foundation and other agencies. So what is exciting for us is to work with uh, young, paper, young filmmakers, mentor them and for our work to achieve critical acclaim. It is also a celebration of our partnership uh, with the Ministry of External Affairs and the Public Diplomacy Division. I don't know if Mr. Akbaruddin is here, but uh, we will greet him formally um, uh, once the film screening is over. But I, I, I do see two wonderful people, Mr. Kapil Raj and Mr. Masakui, uh, from the Public Diplomacy Division, who have been um, uh, probably the most enlightened bureaucrats, along with uh, Mr. Akbaruddin and some of his predecessors, that PSBT has had the privilege of uh, working with, uh, that they have had the vision, they have had the confidence uh, to nurture uh, creativity and to create the space uh, for PSBT to do the kind of work that we're doing. Um, so we're deeply grateful to the Ministry of External Affairs and the Public Diplomacy Division uh, for having made this uh, film possible. This is a celebration of uh, Omesh Agarwal, the filmmaker. It was uh, Omesh's determination, his tenacity, and uh, that this film happened. Uh, it started with uh, the challenge of persuading uh, Mr. Rahman, who is a very quiet, introverted, reticent person about himself, uh, to make available uh, of himself and his time and to provide unprecedented access. Uh, so Omesh was very skillful with doing that and uh, has invested enormously of himself, both personally and financially, far beyond what uh, we could afford in terms of uh, supporting his um, efforts. Uh, the only, so, well, one great blessing of, one of the many blessings of uh, this partnership with him was that he did teach us the cultivation of great patience <laughs> because uh, and, and he had admirable determination at each stage uh, to pursue excellence, uh, to get the best material that he could uh, regardless of uh, the time, money, effort, energy uh, that it took. So um, a very warm welcome uh, to the filmmaker uh, Umesh Agarwal to whom we owe this evening. And uh, as I mentioned, that uh, Omesh has put a great deal of himself into the film. He's one of our PSBT's celebrated uh, filmmakers. Um, he, his film on brokering news and paid news won the Ramnath Goenka Award this year. Uh, his earlier work on um, the whistleblowers, which was looking at the environmental crisis and uh, uh, pesticides on, 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 on aerated drinks. Uh, won a national award. Uh, his, uh, several of his films and, and his television programs, uh, in particular uh, a program called Kiran, uh, which looks at short, inspiring, empowering, positive stories of people who are making a difference, has been widely uh, applauded. So he's an exceptional young talent and we are deeply grateful uh, for our partnership and for having given us one of our biggest films. Good evening. Uh, thank you very much for coming here. Uh, many friends are here, but there are a few things that I have to share. When we started working on this film, we had few challenges. One, 
how do you encapsulate 20 years of a brilliant career in one hour, one and a half hour? And how do you represent uh, more than 125 albums where each song is a milestone and about each song, everyone has an opinion either ways. So that was a very big challenge. But these are the challenges that any filmmaker going into a biographical film would face. Our biggest challenge was that Mr. Rahman hardly spoke in sentences. He completes his, uh, whatever he had to say, if he says more than two words, you are blessed. So whether we could overcome that challenge or not, that you will decide. Uh, before we move ahead, I have few people that I have to thank. Uh, I hope you don't get bored. The list is not very long, but it is very important for me to acknowledge their role. Uh, first of all, my colleague, my friend for more than 20 years, my editor and uh, associate director for this film, Naveen Samhotra. <laughs> then my brother, who happens to be my lifeline also, and the line producer for this film, Mr. Rajesh Agarwal. Our scriptwriter, who has done, I really do not know how many times, how many drafts he must have made, and finally we made a film without narration. So it's his patience also, Mr. Anirban Bhattacharya. <laughs> then our cameraman, many people know him, Alphonse Roy, and we had Mr. Anugun in USA and Vijay Karthik in Chennai. And Mr. K.J. Singh, who is a collaborator with Mr. Rahman and who also mixed our film and he's a friend for more than 20 years. So thank you to all of them. Besides that, deeply felt gratitude to PSBT that has kept the documentary movement alive in India. And Mr. Mehrotra has been, I got unconditional support from him, from Tulika as well as Ritima and of course PD, because they are making it possible. And amazing thing was that it took me almost six months to reach Mr. Rahman and less than five minutes to convince him. And once he uh, agreed to it, we had his full support. And when all doors were closed, he was the last resort. I called him and he always helped and pulled me out of crisis. So thanks to him also, I'll thank him personally when he's here. Thank you very much. I really hope you enjoy the film. Thank you. And the Oscar goes to A.R. Rahman. It's never a cakewalk with him. Man. He doesn't do what you tell him. I don't know of any other composer who, who's really like it. You can always tell one of his songs. Seem to go from Western to Indian and back to Western classical. The clash is obviously going to be of Sare Gama or Do Re Mi Fa. Sir, mala laga dene se Sufiyan nahi ho jata. Itna slow gana shuru karta hai. Kya aapko lagta hai ki aap late jayenge? How much do you love music? Tremendously. I wouldn't have been here otherwise. Okay, do you love me? Do you want me to say that? Do you want me to show that? Uh, 
May I invite uh, Mr. Rahman onto the stage if he can hear me, otherwise I shall go and fetch him. If I could uh, invite Mr. Akpuruddin to say a, fa a few words of, uh, okay, right there, a few words of formal welcome to Mr. Rahman and uh, our gratitude. Good evening, friends. Uh, you know, bureaucracy and creativity, the only thing they have in common is a why. And I'm sure you must be wondering why I'm here. Well, I'm here only because um, at the end of this film, there was a small little reference to the Ministry of External Affairs. We've actually, all the creativity comes from there and the difficulty comes from this side. Um, we are grateful to PSBT for having worked with us in a very creative manner to bring onto the screen a person who is one of India's well-known icons. We hope that this partnership with PSBT and Mr. Umesh Agarwal will be able to showcase what's unique about Mr. Rahman and what's unique about our country. Uh, we make films, but we make films for audiences outside India. Uh, but seeing the excitement all of you have here, I think this film will do well both outside India and in India. We are grateful to Mr. Rahman for having agreed to be the subject of this film. And we are very proud that Mr. Agarwal and the PSBT have decided to work with the Ministry of External Affairs on this venture. That's the only way bureaucracy can be creative. We choose creative persons. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much, sir, for being here today. Mr. Rahman, you've uh, won so many awards, and you have won millions of hearts around the world uh, from who you are. And like any great artist, your work enables people to reach out to the universe and to reach out into themselves. What has it been like for you to watch a film about yourself? A very tough question because <clears throat> I don't like to watch myself. Um, even at home when my wife puts one of the interviews, I just run away. And she always wants me to sit and watch along with her. So when I was first, um, the first screening happened in New York, um, I was about to sit for five minutes and I decided to move away and slip away actually. But uh, it's not only about me, it's about other people's perception about me and so it was very um, captivating in a way, the way he has done it. He's made me likable, which is a great thing. <laughs> I don't think many people like me, some people love me, some people hate me too. But this um, definitely has put his passion, Umesh Ji, thank you so much. But what about yourself? How does, that f how does the film make you feel about yourself? Um, as human beings we evolve, we, what I had, the basic foundation of my character is the same, but then I've, I'm evolving intellectually maybe and spiritually and, and I'm studying from life and I'm changing in a good way according to my age. So um, what I was 20, 25 years back, um, maybe some of the foundation of that remains still and some of them have changed for the better or worse. So watching myself, so I wanted to document in a way, I felt that the idea of documenting this part of my life would be interesting to see what happens after 10 years. You're a musician but you're also a remarkable human being uh, and, and, and some of that emerges so wonderfully in the film that uh, your compassion, your, your common touch, uh, what is your aspiration in, 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 in those directions. And let me phrase it a little differently. Is it necessary or useful for a great artist such as you to also be a good human being? I think it's the way I've, I've been brought up. I've been 
uh, brought up my family from South India. This is the way we brought up, and this is, these are the basic principles of life we were taught. And uh, no, I also grew up reading Tirukkural from Tamil literature, then many other, you know, and uh, now Sufi, uh, the, you know, the spirituality of that and the way how it, um, the basic idea of Sufism is about fighting the ego. And not the creative ego for me, it's the personal ego. <laughs> So because, uh, and this film actually for me would be, uh, because when I watch films, when I watch documentaries like this, I get inspired. I watched uh, a couple of documentaries and I felt like uh, I've learned so much from that as a character, as a human being. And I felt if somebody even gets a couple of, um, um, some inspiration from this, it would be a good thing. And so I let it happen. Ah, but the question that… The question. That <laughs> I always dodge the question. Is there something that you learned about yourself from the film that hadn't occurred to you? No, actually… Yeah, there were a lot of funny quotes which was interesting to watch. <laughs> and… No, I was checking my hairstyle. <laughs> I'm more concerned about it. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> You know, the, the, the film is, is created in the context, and you know, I must do my, my, my duty by the Ministry of External Affairs in a sense, is, uh, you know, was, was positioned to look at, look at India's soft power globally, and in many ways uh, you embody, uh, you know, the Indian aspiration, uh, Indian culture, and you've put that on the world map uh, in, 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 in so many significant ways. So what is this? Indianness, this quality of Indianness as you go out through your music and, 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 and then your music is using so many diverse forms and diverse inspirations. So what is that Indian quality? I think from the beginning, that's one thing I, was, I never failed to mention in my interviews is why can't we do this? Why can't we do this? What's stopping us from being excellent? What's stopping us from making a great song which other people can listen to? Why are we making music only for Indians? Why are we listening to other parts of the world's music, but nobody's listening to our music? The very esoteric audiences for you know, certain classical music of India, but but why can't our music become mainstream? It has all the substances and all the uh, yeah. things which is needed for. Um, so I think many levels I had to fight in the very beginning of my life for quality for constantly keep checking that something might go wrong. I never believe them. Is it done? Yes. Can I, can I hear it? And it will be wrong. And uh, in many cases, in, and so that even happens now. Even now when I finish a product, I have to personally check and sign it off. I know that something is going to be wrong. And if I will be surprised, 100, you know, out of 100, I think probably once I'll be happy with what. <laughs> So that's also a kind of insecurity you have. I need to have that till I do music, I feel. Which is not only about trusting other people, but also you might get a better thought. Oh, I, I could do it better. And, and that's, I think, one of the main aspects in our team we have. He just mentioned this aspect of, you know, you could do a hundred things and then there's that one thing that, that will always show up. And I know how hard you have worked and labored uh, with every frame of this film to try and bring it to absolute perfection, if that is possible. And some of that must have included dealing with him. Well, uh, <laughs> when you work with brilliant people, so you learn a lot, can you imagine, I, I shouldn't be but I will have to share this, last night at around 10 o'clock, I got a message from him, have you checked the audio in auditorium? <laughs> And I, after that, I have to be responsible enough, not to myself, but to him, that there is nothing that should go wrong. Well, you know, there's a question, I was, I was uh, talking to Mr. Rahman in, in, in the green room, and he said, you know, a, a question and a response that always comes up, and I, if I remember the, you know, there have been so many versions and edits of the film that I've sort of lost track. But this proverbial complaint or, or, or celebration of Mr. Rahman has been that every musician will say that he gets a call at one o'clock in the morning when Mr. Rahman is doubly inspired and they want him <coughs> at the studio now 
and the working day will end at 8 o'clock in the morning. So he is a tough taskmaster. The floor is open. We have uh, you know, people who will hopefully show up with microphones. If you please stand up so you're visible. Uh, Mr. Rahman, uh, in the film, all the directors and producers and your associates, uh, they ascribe one uh, big quality about you is that you have always uh, defied convention, you have overturned uh, all the norms and conventions. So, when will you do away with melody? And would you ever go in for uh, a tonal music or concrete music? Thank you. Wow. I think for me, um, melody is a foundation. And uh, that gives the utmost satisfaction when I compose something and it's universal. For some of the background scores, I think it's amazing to have a tonal um, kind of, you know, abstract, avant-garde. And um, I've actually come across a couple of directors who wanted that kind of stuff in the past four years. And, uh, and I also wanted, in the future, when I have the time, I want to do an album like that. Because it also creates, it's also mood oriented, it's, it's not formulaic, it's, it's got its own uh, vibration. Uh, how, do, how did you venture into the completely western sort of the thing and where did you train, where did you sort of get into that uh, arena, so to say? I think I started really young, age of, um, you know, I've been listening to South Indian music from the age of five or six. My father was a, he was involved in many, you know, arrangements and compositions and so after he passed away, um, I had played for many composers and I got sick of hearing the same thing. <laughs> and you know, almost worked on folk, you know, South Indian folk and South Indian classical. So for me, listening to Hindustani or Ghazals or uh, you know, Western classical was almost freshening and uh, refreshing. And, and that's one of the reasons why the ease of switching between things came about. And definitely when I was doing Roja, I didn't want to attempt on any South Indian ragas because every melody is influenced by something. It's, there's some sweet spot where I, and so the ragas were very Jujayavanti and uh, Deesh and Darbari and, and very North Indian ragas. And that, maybe that's one of the reasons why it also uh, came to North India and was successful. But, but there's a lot of Western classical music as Western, well in your yeah, compositions. Western classical also started at the age of nine or ten, I think. Mm -hmm. I was learning piano and uh, had to travel probably an hour to Thiranmir to learn. So the whole process was very interesting. I would work in the studios and then on Sundays and Saturdays I had one of the teachers, Jacob John, who would only be free on Saturdays and Sundays, so I'd go there and learn. And that took me to a whole new world, you know, listening to those harmonies. And, and of course, my high school band uh, experience, learning um, about Deep Purple and Pink Floyd and all that stuff. I didn't understand what it was because I was writing notes and playing. <laughs> I didn't even memorize. But later, I never knew that I would be sitting with um, Mick Jagger and making music in the same room. <laughs> We're really proud of you, Mr. Ayman. You're an Oscar winner, and you put us on the world stage for very many reasons. So I just like your view on uh, the three tracks which really uh, made Oscar news this year. Whiplash, Birdman, Interstellar. Give us your views, and, and would you go in that direction? I think my favorite was definitely Whiplash. <laughs> Why? Because uh, that's one kind of music where very few people relate to jazz music. That's right and um, how they made people sit and watch the movie. It reminded me of Shankara Barnum, long back, how Carnatic music had that kind of a movie. And uh, it is probably, you now Whiplash is a jazz version of that, I would say. And the kind of fear for the teacher, and kind of respect for the art, and, and the kind of determination to crack that. And uh, as a principal of a music school, college back in Chennai, I think I relate to that very much. Excellence is really, really. And the other two, of course, Hans Zimmer is one of my friends, and yeah. I love that too. He's a great guy, yeah. I've not listened to Birdman yet. I'm going to watch the movie. Okay. People my age are really fascinated with success, fame that comes when you become something. Will your song have the same? How have you kept yourself so rooted up even after becoming 
what you are today? I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, um, I'd played on TV when I was 12 or 13. I was in Wonder Balloon and all those uh, children's program. And it was on National Network too. So people used to spot me then. But when I became a composer, that love was completely am amazing. And, and for me, to do the next, I, I never thought music would come to me again. I felt all my music was, had exhausted in Roja. And I was fascinated when I could do tunes and people loved me even more. And that kept me going. So every time you feel you've done a movie, you don't know what next is going to happen. Anything can happen. People can reject you. So that fear is also another thing which you, know, you, you want to know. You want to do more. And for that, I think the basic quality is humility, I guess. As to the effect that uh, your music has on people, uh, it, 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 it makes us feel joy, it makes us feel ebullient, ebullient, it makes us feel complete. It sort of brings our emotions and feelings together for those moments. But what does music do for you? Music. <laughs> I think it started like a... My mom wanted music to be a profession, my profession. And I was not, I was just doing it for my mom. And then at the age of 18, 19, it became a real passion for me. And now it's like madness. And uh, because that's the one thing I can catch on, that's the one thing people love. And, I'm, and I want to pass it on to the next generation. So we started the college and, and so many interesting things are happening back in Chennai with the college. And uh, yeah. Well, you know, art is supposed to be both sort of agony and ecstasy. It's, you know, the agony of trying to create something and then you give expression to it and then there's ecstasy. So, is music both agony and ecstasy for you, the, the, the creative process? And then simply listen, listening to music. So, are you ever, ever able to listen to music for the sheer pleasure of it? Or are you constantly feel the impulse to engage with it, to understand it, to judge it, to see what you can do with it. Does it complicate after, your life? You no, know, after doing so many movies and so much of compositions, you always want to see what else is there. Go deeper in it. And, uh, but the chances of the platforms for that is less in movies. You know, they want, and especially now, even in Hollywood, I think, before you can really play a melody, it has to be cut, and then it has to be. Even if you compose it, because people, music, look like those days, when you hear a full suite of uh, music where you see things happening and it actually becomes a character. Now it has become more like ambient, mm -hmm. especially in Hollywood, I feel. And, uh, and that's one of the reasons why to go further in music, I started my own film company mm -hmm. and see what are the possibilities you can do, go much more further, yet not bore people out. <laughs> But that's interesting. You say you started a film company yeah. to see how music can go further. To commission myself. To, <laughs> <laughs> to commission yourself to do the music and then have people make movies around it? Yeah. That's wonderful. I think that calls for a special round of applause for, for a film to be driven by music instead of the other way around. You know, so many of us turn to music for solace, for comfort, for insight, to feel expansive. Uh, what do you do? When I'm working on soundtracks, when I'm working too much on music, I don't listen to anything. I just keep Then silence. what do you do at that time too? Just silence? silence. <laughs> mm -hmm. But when I'm traveling, I do listen to music. I listen to Nusrat still. I listen to uh, classical music listen to Khan Saab, particularly Khan Saab. Mm -hmm. And uh, many things, now you, now you have YouTube, you can go anywhere and hear you know, rehearsals of an orchestra in 1947, and so many amazing things. So what I meant was that when you listen to it, is there a voiceover that's talking to it, that's listening to it, evaluating it? Or are you able to move away from being the composer, a creator, a mas master, to just surrendering to different kinds of music? In a way, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you, there's a character in every composition. There's a character in every genre of music. And that's what, I think for film music, it's so important to be true to that. 
and uh, you're not making the same kind of songs for for a soundtrack. And my life revolves around soundtracks, <laughs> till now at least. Life revolves around soundtracks. Uh, may I add a point here? Uh, I got to know about it, but somehow I could not include it in the film that AR watches films on silent mode. <laughs> And he imagines the soundtrack instead of listening to it. I didn't know how to present it into the film, so I just left it out, but I found it extremely interesting. How do you figure out the dialogue, though? <laughs> Subtitles. <laughs> All right. Mr. Rahman, thank you for your music. My question is to do with your academy that was shown in the film. Could you tell us a little about you know, what your vision is? How do you select these children? and a little bit about how, what you dream this to become. You know, I've uh, just released the music of Guru Nanak Fakir in the morning, in the Gurudwara, and Uttamji had done the music, and Thomas did the score. And uh, I asked Uttamji, I played with him 30 years back with Raja Saab. He was conducting and I was playing keyboards. I asked him, Do you, are there any good players out in Mumbai? He says, no, it's all dead. No musicians are there coming out, younger musicians, to play strings. So I told him about my school, I said, I, the same thing happened to me, I one day realized that we're not doing anything about that. We want musicians for scores and everything, but... So I started the college around five years back in Chennai. And for strings and uh, brass, we're picking up underprivileged kids and teaching them. And we have a chamber orchestra now who can play in tune. You see, you've seen them there, now they're better than that. <laughs> so that's the idea, to have a national orchestra you know, coming from the school and in the capital, we don't have an orchestra. When, you know, when the Prime Minister met the President of the United States, I would have imagined our Indian Symphony Orchestra playing. I didn't watch the function, of course, but was it happening? No. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the kind of moment I was thinking, having 200 choir, 200 piece choir happening and having a bandish being in harmony and, you know, those kind of things, which can, be, can happen when, when you have an orchestra. That's my dream. So I've been, it's almost five years since we started and it's slowly building. We probably have the country's best piano players already there. What are the similarities and difference between R.D. Berman and A.R. Rahman? I mean, R.D. Berman has been creating music ahead of his times and now you are creating music ahead of, ahead of your times. So I mean, uh, I think there are certain similarities between you and R.D. Da. I think you can explain. I think the quest for, uh, quest for doing something out of the box. I'm a big Ardi fan. Yes. And uh, I have too much other responsibilities than RDG now. Yeah. School <laughs> and many things. <laughs> so I'm trying to jiggle around both and find my space. I really wonder whether you've had a moment in your life that you've heard music, maybe your own, maybe others, that has so emotionally charged you that it automatically tears rolling down your eyes. Have you ever many had a times, moment? Many times, many times. Um, I think every true music has that quality. You know when it comes in. At the right time, probably in your, also your human state, you might be in different state of mind every day, and sometimes it really comes in. A very personal question here. The movie here, The Jai Ho, ended uh, with your comment that I feel naked now. What made you say yes to a film which would unravel you and demystify you of a sort? There's still many secrets. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Some no, of kidding. them you can still share with us. Some which was not spelled no, out. I think uh, at a point of time when I, I think I started in the school actually changed me as a different person. I, um, I'm not a person who would go and teach anybody. I'm not, I don't share because I, First of all, when, when the idea comes and it comes, at, it's, it's like a stroke of lightning and you don't know where it's coming from and it's sometimes beautiful and you can't, it's not a methodical um, process. So many times when you explain it, it becomes so bland and, and I just figured out I can't teach people. So I'd go back to what happened in certain easier things and, and that's what made me uh, start the school and then sometimes I do the same thing with the, my kids, my school kids and then we keep talking, they ask me questions and and that's why, uh, that's when I felt like this might be an interesting thing where people, you know, you share things with people and, and let's see what happens, what questions they're going to ask back. How do you think uh, spirituality has changed you as a person or your perspective and has helped you in your music? 
I think music, as a musician or any professional, you constantly challenged with many things, deadlines and financial stuff and taxes and so many things are there. You need to keep all that away and still be the person, the artist. Which is very, you know, see this, if you see the life story of Mozart, what he went through in the last stages. You know, he didn't have money, so he had to do this, uh, this requiem and so many things happen. That happens to every musician at every level. And uh, so spirituality actually helps you to be that, away from all that, yet be in it. To be, you know, in like an like a oil on water. <laughs> Thank you. So, otherwise, you'll never come. You can never sustain. <laughs> you know, implicit in that uh, question uh, was, a, was, a, was, was a perception or, or, or a feeling that great art, like great spirituality, uh, is born out of intense suffering and pain. And it is that that creates the quality of empathy, the human connectedness that heart, art helps you establish. Do you feel you suffer a lot somehow, more than other people? Suffering has to be there. Sometimes, to get an idea, you have to wait for two months. And make other people suffer too. <laughs> <laughs> in, 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 in what ways do you think it, it, it enhances or, or adds value uh, to your work? Because surely there is a difference between, uh, in, in great art, between virtuosity, which is technique, which you can teach, and, and elements, for want of a better word, of, of, of soul, of, feeling and, and intense emotion that that virtuosity becomes a medium for. So there is, the, there is the human being behind the virtuosity and that's the difference between computer generated music and what a human being does. I think music happens when you lose yourself. Mm -hmm. you know, when you know exactly what's, what to give, it's boring. Sometimes, you know, I was doing a, I just did a finished soundtrack with Mani Ratnam and there's one of the songs um, we did after seeing the movie, and I had done a tune, and I, I was I had something in my mind, and it was 15 minutes. I was singing, and 15 minutes, 16 minutes, 17 minutes, and the last two minutes had the tune. <laughs> so when Money heard the tune, he said, "The last two minutes has it." So that's when you just all the other stuff goes off, and the real, when you lose yourself, the tune comes in. But you know, a yeah. romantic notion of music is that it is the, the composer, who, it's, it's his self-expression. And you mentioned that you were looking at setting up a film production company and that would be driven by music. Uh, what are the challenges of, of, of working to a script, of meeting the, the, the imperatives or the, the expectations of what the director feels is going to complement? Uh, do you have to put aside your sense of self or your ego uh, to create music that works? Well, the fast for the past four years, I've been evolving. First, it used to be one vision. And then I said, this has to be watched by many people. So what do you do? And, and look through that, this vision, and find things which could, which what people love, but in a, in a way where it will complement this one. So that's why I'm taking that. Mm -hmm. But it is, you know, communication is both sending out the message and it being received. Uh, you know, for some people, just creating it, uh, cr producing art is getting over your anguish and that feeling of catharsis that I've made that piece of music. Does it end there? Do you actually sit down and watch? Look, are people no, that, no, that's... If that feeling happens, I think I'm very sure that even if it takes six months for them to get the music, they will get it. <laughs> that's when, when sometimes when music releases and they don't respond well and I just keep quiet. And then after six months, everything comes back and they see the honesty in the... Uh -huh. the work. Uh, what are your views, suggestions on the independent music circuit since you've also been a part of Roots yourself? Uh, what are your suggestions for the independent music circuit of India in particular as well as how do you see it becoming a part of any national significance in the coming years? That would be. I feel anything which is striking and anything which is original will have its own PR. And so you, you put yourself, you, you just go really, really deep into it. And if you strike it, it's going to happen. So the, I know that in, in uh, Hindi movies and in movies, they put so much of money in it, market it. But, and certain things, without even marketing, comes out beautifully. I've seen that happen in the world. Many great artists have been discovered that, even on YouTube now. I think that's one thing. Just put, lean into it and go really deep into it. You don't need anything else. And that will become an alternate. 
you. I saw the trailer for Mohammed and Majid Madidi's um, next film, and you have done music for that. Is there a special way that you do uh, music for a film like that? I mean, doing music for Mohammed by Majid Madidi. Are, are there special films? Do they? Do you change um, your procedure? Yeah. yeah. That music is not mine. <laughs> I think they're taking stuff from the making and put some music in it. Of course, there's one little piece of my voice in it. Um, Majid Majidi, I've always been fascinated by uh, you know Iranian cinema and any cinema which is outside India, especially Iranian, because they have uh, boundaries and within the boundaries they need to excel and how they do it and, and how they make it so beautiful. And uh, I always wanted to go there and you know hang out and I never had the opportunity. Of course, you get very busy and. And when this opportunity came in, I had the couple of years back, I was there on the sets. And uh, last year, I had made three trips and kept asking him, how, is it, how, is, how did he do this shot? And how he patiently explained, he's, of course, in Farsi, and there'll be a translator. And, um, and with him, he didn't understand, again, with me, all the directors understand, because they know they gossip amongst themselves and know, oh, this is what he does. You have to wait here. You have to this will come out later. And they understand the way it, and they're pretty, uh, I think it's been going well for 20, 23 years. But there he didn't know anything about me. And so when I played a tune, he would be blank placed. What is this? <laughs> then I, it took me a while. It took me a couple of sessions to understand what he was expecting. He was expecting a full scale, you know, arranged, uh, full on with choir and strings and and then I asked him, okay, what else do you like? I mean, I played him on music of other composers and on YouTube and said, do you like this? And he said, yes, this I don't like. So I had made a mark of around 20 tracks which he liked and, and 30 which he disliked. <laughs> so with that, I assumed that, okay, this is what he likes. And so I took the same mel melodies which I presented him and rearranged it and played him and it worked. So it was a six month process, <laughs> but it's worth it because it's one of the beautiful movies I've seen. Well, I have been threatened with the guillotine, so no more questions. Uh, I did, I did want to, I did want to acknowledge uh, Rasun Pukiti, who's here, and if he could stand up, uh, he is a the Oscar-winning sound recordist. And um, please come on stage. And this is, this is really important. Where is he? Please come on stage. And the reason I do this is, is, is twice over. Please come. Uh, because these are the sort of the, the, the unsung heroes uh, of our uh, film and music industry uh, who really make uh, the work of people like Mr. Rahman possible. And from all of us here, uh, Omesh will present the bouquet that was given to him. <laughs> uh, so on that, on that wonderful note, uh, uh, thank you very much, Umesh, for uh, 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 an important film that has been a great um, learning experience for us, very inspiring, uh, Akbar, for making our work possible, and of course, above all, for the man at the center of our universe, Mr. A. R. Rahman, and uh, may his life bring us lots more joy, happiness, insight, and he continued to shine as the great beacon. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.